Governor Parson recently signed a new law offering tax credits aimed at attracting film crews and entertainment business to the state. Tax credits for the film industry that Missouri hasn't had for 10 years. What a great opportunity for our state. All we got to do is just get after it and make it happen. And so it happens that a new film is being shot in St. Louis. It's the true story of St. Louisan John O'Leary and is based on his book, On Fire. John told us his story when that book was still in the works. In this photo of the O'Leary family of town and country, John O'Leary was about three years old. When John was nine, he spotted some older boys playing with matches and gasoline and decided to try it himself in his family's garage. You can imagine what happened next. Burned on 100% of my body. 87% was third degree. And so they bring me into the hospital and I remember laying there as a little boy. I caught myself on fire, I caught the house on fire and I was sure I totally, totally let my father down. So that was my thought, and you can imagine my surprise and relief when he comes in, and the first thing my dad says to me is how much he loves me and how proud he is of me, and so it changed the entire story thereafter. John received an abundance of love, support, and encouragement from family, nurses, doctors, and friends. He would need it for the months of skin grafts and other procedures he would endure in the hospital. Word of John's accident quickly reached the ears of one of his heroes, St. Louis Cardinals announcer Jack Buck. The legendary broadcaster found out where the young patient was being treated and paid him a surprise visit. I loved him, but I'd never met him before. So he walks into this space, and now it's not 1120 KMOX, it's bedroom 406 at the Burns Center. He's sitting next to me, I, I kind of sense a presence. And then he speaks into my darkness, and what he says very firmly was, kid, wake up. You are going to live. You are going to survive. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. And when you get out of here, we are going to celebrate. We'll call it John O'Leary Day at the ballpark. And then I remember he said something like, uh, kid, are you listening? It tied down, swollen shit. I remember nodding gently. And then my hero says back, good, keep fighting. See you soon. And that promise of visiting this little boy was made and kept and delivered upon for the next five months and really for the rest of my life. Uh, an incredible untold story of a guy from our community who stood up and served, did it quietly, and in doing so radically changed my life. So Ruth, my, my oldest boy is named Jack, and we named him after Jack Buck. So when we come to the games, we make a point out of parking on this side of the stadium so we can walk right past and, and point out this man who touched our life so, so dearly and so deeply. O'Leary explained how Buck persuaded him to relearn handwriting in spite of his hand's deformities. When I was first burned and out of the hospital, what he learned is that I could not use my hands at all. So Jack, thinking the way that only Jack Buck could have done, dreams outside of the box and asks himself what more he can do. He sends me a baseball signed by Ozzy Smith, and below the ball was a note from Jack Buck, and it says, kid, if you want a second baseball, all you have to do is send a thank you letter to the man who signed the first one. And, and then, you did. I did, but he knew I could not write, but he also knew the value of bribery, the value of encouraging a little guy to get what he really wanted, which was not to go back to school, but was a second baseball. So I write this note to Ozzy, mail it off, and two days later, I get a second baseball from my hero that says, kid, if you want a third baseball. So I write another note, mail it off. A few days later, Ruth, I get a fourth baseball, a fifth baseball, a sixth baseball. By the end of 1987, Jack Buck sends 60 baseballs to oh. a little boy in a wheelchair, without hands, with no chance, teaching him how to ride again, transforming forever my life. They remained friends until Buck's death in 2002. O'Leary's life changed for the better in other ways. The summer following his release from the hospital, John and his five siblings were taken by their mom and dad on vacation to Colorado. Denny and Susan O'Leary had always wanted to climb a mountain. Taking a cue from the adage, life's too short, 
they made their wish come true with family in tow in 1988. Several years ago, Denny and Susan O'Leary wrote a book about their experiences with their son's accident and recovery and the community's response. It was illuminating for John to read about how his situation affected his parents. He wasn't the only one impressed by their story. One of the groups that read their book originally was a group of Girl Scouts out in West County. So this little group asked me to speak to their school. It's going to be three Girl Scouts in the first row. It's third graders. And I am so nervous before sharing this story. I get sick in the parking lot before walking in to talk about these, this story with these little girls. But in leaving that day and in hugging these little ones, I realized the calling to get over myself, get past this, the fear, and to share this story as it ignites hope and inspiration in the lives of others. Look at our country, look at this stadium, look at your friends and family members around you. We are fortunate. That talk before a group of grade schoolers evolved into a career as a motivational speaker. Whatever, my friends, we choose to focus on will grow around us. Uh, if you focus on the negativity, watch out because it's coming. If you focus on the possibility and the beauty of tomorrow and how it starts today, watch out because it's on, it's coming, hang on. O'Leary has shared his story with a half million people and counting around the world. Finally, John O'Leary decided it was time for him to write a book. It took a few tries, but what he ended up with convinced Simon & Schuster to sign him on with its new publishing unit, North Star Way. I'm thrilled to be signed by them and looking forward to the book coming out next year. His book did come out, On Fire, The Seven Choices to a Radically Inspired Life. It sold well and was translated into dozens of languages because he speaks all over the world. And he even had Someone a PBS special book, that ran know, during Pledge. Two or three John O'Leary visited our studios in 2019 to do some promotional spots for the special and talk with Jim Kircher about how things had been going since that first story a few years before. You know, when, when they first published the book, there was a picture of me on the front of it. So it says on fire and there's a picture of me kind of looking tough. So I sent back an email saying that's the wrong cover. The book's not about me, and the cover most certainly should not be about me. It's about the community. It's about ordinary siblings and parents and doctors and nurses and custodians and baseball announcers and human beings rolling up their sleeves, doing the best work they can to serve someone else, a cause greater than themselves. And I think that is a story, in particular in our marketplace today, that connects with all of us. Like, we, we long to see heroes to see examples of people not just wearing capes that can fly around, but people who wear stethoscopes and people who work in school buildings and people who make a difference by being who they are, serving someone greater than, than themselves. You're in Whatever the motivational, friend, inspirational we'll business. Around. You're not the only guy in that Focus business. I just wonder from a marketing okay. standpoint, how difficult is it to position yourself and, and to create a, a personality or a message that's maybe a little different from the other guy right. who's doing inspirational, motivational stuff. So the cool thing about our brand is we've never really had to create it. I am as authentic in front of you or a camera or my four kids making pancakes or the back row of church spanking kids and, you know, please be quiet, children, as I am in front of a stadium or a podcast microphone or anywhere else in the marketplace. So my, my brand is uniquely me, for better and for worse. And so for some, that's going to say, oh, we're just not interested. But for most of us, I think we're looking for evidence of authenticity. And we're looking for people who have courage to do things bigger than themselves. And our whole story, not just the one I tell through my book, but the stories we tell through our podcast are about individuals who are overcoming, people who are pointing the way forward, and people who are reminding the rest of us that in spite of some challenges around us, the best is yet to come, but hold on for the ride.